that you can call on him in prayer. And they're saying, well, this is not the worship of the Prophet. This is just calling on him in prayer. No. No. If you call on anyone who cannot answer your call, you are worshiping him. What I mean is, we call on each other to get help. You know? I need to start my car. Come and give me a hand, please. No problem. This is not considered to be worship. You're calling on somebody who can come to your aid. Although, the higher level is not to call on anyone. Prophet Muhammad said, if you can guarantee me you will not ask anyone for anything, I will guarantee you paradise. This is a hadith narrated by Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. If you can guarantee that you will not ask anyone for anything, the Prophet ﷺ said, I will guarantee you paradise. And Abu Dhar said, when the Prophet ﷺ said that, I never asked anyone for anything. And that's what he was known for. He would not ask anyone for anything. But this is not something required of everybody. This, was just, this is the higher level. Back to the rest of us. We ask people to help us in this and that and the other. These people who can help us, no problem. But now, if we call on somebody who isn't here, right? They're living. Right? You have groups that promote this. You can call on the sheikh. Right? You have a problem. You need his help. Just call on him. He's a living sheikh. The fact that you call on him, he's not present, he's not available to help you, that's worship. If he's dead, it's also worship. So whether you call on Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani, who is popular in the Indian subcontinent and elsewhere, we're given the title Ghawsi Azam, right? Al-Ghawth Al-A'zam, meaning the greatest source of help. Right? Whether you do that, and he's dead, or you call on Sheikh uh, Nazim, you know, because you are from the Naqshabandi order and Sheikh Nazim is the man. So you call on him when you are in need. He's a living, he's a living person, but he's not here. This is worship. And when you call on Rasulullah Sallallahu again, you have a line of argument that people try to raise. But he's living. He's living. Prophet ﷺ said that when the prophets die, the earth doesn't eat their body. Okay. Because the earth doesn't eat their body, does it mean they're living? Or this is just a miracle from Allah? Point number one. Point number two if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not dead, then the Sahaba committed a grave crime by burying a man alive. Isn't it? If he wasn't dead, then what are they doing burying him? This, this is nonsense. This is error. Clear error. The point is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead and this we know this happened when he first died Omar came in and he was upset people were saying that he was dead and he threatened people he stood up there with his sword and said anybody who says that the Prophet ﷺ is dead you're gonna lose your head people backed off Abu Bakr came he went in checked the Prophet ﷺ, lifted up the garment saw he was dead kissed his forehead put it back and came outside pushed Omar aside he said, whoever was worshipping Muhammad وسلم, know that Muhammad is dead. But whoever was worshipping the Lord of Muhammad then know that the Lord of Muhammad is ever living. Right? So, 
The point is that to call on anyone who cannot answer your prayers is worship. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Calling, ad-du'a, to make du'a, to call on, from da'a, da'wa means to call. It is worship in its essence. That is the essence of worship, calling. We say, Ya Allah. If you say, Ya Rasulullah, you're involved in worshiping the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why in the masjids where you see people like to put up these plates, ornate plates, it says, Ya Allah, Ya Rasulullah, this is wrong. It's wrong. Now some people say, well, don't we say in our tashahud, Assalamu salamu alayka, ayyuhar rasul. Don't we say this? Peace be on you, O Messenger. Don't we say this? This is not in our tashahud. Yes, it is in the one that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. But Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he informed that when the Prophet ﷺ was living among them, they used to say that. But when he died, instead they said, "Assalam ala nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be on the messenger and Allah's mercy and blessings. They didn't say, alayka anymore. Ayyuhal rasul. Or ayyuhal nabi. They said, assalam ala nabi. Now scholars have differed as to whether you should follow what Abd, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, or whether we should just go with what the Prophet ﷺ initially taught, the proper methodology is to go with what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said. Why? Because he said, we used to, not just I, I used to, that may be a personal thing on his part, but he said we, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and there are a number of other narrations of other companions saying the same thing. So, if we now are going to understand what Prophet Muhammad ﷺ taught us, do we understand it as our own minds tells us? Or do we understand it the way that the, mess the companions of the Prophet ﷺ understood it? This is the crux of the matter. Our understanding of Islam should depend on how the companions of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ understood Islam. Otherwise, you will end up with all kinds of interpretations. The way of the companions of the, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, that way about which Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, my nation will divide up into 73 different sects. 72 in hell and one in paradise. And when the companions asked the Prophet Sallallahu what is that one? He said, the one that I am on and you are on. Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. The one which I am following and my companions follow. So this is the correct understanding. So when we come back to Tawheed al-Ibadah, worshipping Allah, by maintaining his unity in that worship, we do so in the way that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad did. We do not invent or introduce new ways of worship.